Hey, welcome back to the channel team. As always, man, I am stoked to see you. So one of the things that was in the, that's was that been drumming around in the news, uh, well, probably within the last you know week or so especially, has been uh, the more talk that's been generated about changes coming to, or at least potential changes coming to, the Army Infantry Squad. So we know that the Corps has already made some recent changes. I'm going from a 13-man squad uh, to a 15-man squad, and just adding some additional capabilities uh, and, and some of the skill sets that they're bringing to the table, being a little bit more, uh, ele bring some more electronic stuff, uh, quite frankly, to what what uh, what they're doing. So, and having a, an assistant squad leader, which was kind of the fire team leader's responsibility a long time ago, but whatever. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing to make changes. So the two big changes that are on the table is increasing uh, the, the squad um, by, by another man or two, which kind of almost fits in line with the new infantry uh, squad vehicle that we're seeing being fielded right now uh, out in Fort Bragg, right? Because I think that uh, when we were talking about it earlier, a couple of weeks ago, you know, it's going to fit like 13 dudes. And I think we're probably looking at maybe going upwards of 11. So adding in potentially, you know, some drone capabilities and maybe some other uh, communication assets uh, to the rifle squad. It could be kind of interesting. The other big thing that's in the news, you know, is potentially, potentially doing away with the squad automatic weapon. Now, the saw or the squad automatic weapon, of course, it fires a 5.56. Um, and you have one per team, and although it's a kind of a decent weapon, it's got a kind of a bad rap, right? Because it's not the 240. Right? The 240, everybody loves that thing. I don't care if it's the 240 Golf or the 240 Bravo. Everybody loves the 240. The additional fire and stopping power that it brings to the table. It's reliability uh, to not jam on the operator. It is renowned in both services, man. I loved it back when I was in the Corps, and I still love the thing now. And I wish we had those in my arms room as opposed to uh, saws. But the saw, on the other hand, is renowned for being garbage, right? Garbage. The only thing that it really has going for it is the fact that it does use 5.56. So it makes the ammo interchangeable between that and the M4. But other than that, I don't know anybody who loves carrying around a saw. I don't know anybody who loves employing the saw. So we'll see what kind of changes they make. You know, they're looking at, a, I think it's a 6.8 millimeter uh, weapon. And that poses some interesting things in and of itself, especially if you start talking about fielding as many, you know, if we're talking about replacing the saw, so now the numbers are going to go up. It's not, not, not just like replacing the 240. But if we start talking about replacing the saw, a lot of things have to come into consideration with uh, how ammo is allocated. So it'll be really interesting to see what they come up with. Of course, you know, we're always, it's kind of like concept cars, right? The concept cars come around uh, every year at the big trade shows and stuff, and everybody's like, ooh, ah, you know, let me throw a, a ball through the Tesla window uh, and generate a lot of noise, right? And we, we do this all the time in the military as well. So there's organizations that are out there that create new things, and there's, kind of, and there's some think tanks that are out there, and they bring new things to the table that get everybody's head spinning. Uh, and some, some of the stuff sticks. Some of the weapon platforms, they stick, and, and, but most of them, quite frankly, they don't. Now, when it comes time to, uh, you know, make changes to personnel and to manning, one of the things I can promise you is if the Army decides to, to increase the squad uh, by a soldier or two, that it doesn't mean that, that the total authorized strength in the Army is going to go up. No, 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 no. In fact, they're just going to pull from other units and or get rid of you know a couple battalions and, and then just reallocate all those bodies so it's it's, it's a numbers game it's, it's a it's a money game it's a it's a congressional game you know when you start talking about making 
big changes like that. But I'm excited to see what kind of changes are coming up uh, in the future. Let me know. I've seen lots of changes, right? And I'm curious to see what kind of changes you've seen and what kind of changes you would like to see coming. But of course, I've seen all kinds of changes uh, from 1995 to present. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens just within the next uh, few years. And who knows what other kind of changes we may see, you know, if uh, in the next four years compared to what we've seen in the, in the last four. So I don't know. Let me know what uh, you think down in the comments below, man, about a, a larger, more capable, more lethal uh, squad automatic weapon, you know, replacing that, as well as... Uh, Maybe adding in some different capabilities to what the rifle squad is organically designed and capable of doing. Does the rifle squad, the rifle squad, right? Not just talking a, a particular unit, but we're talking about the rifle squad. What should they be able to do? MTO based, right? Across the board. If you are uh, an 11 Bravo, what should you be inherently designed and able to do the battleground is shifting and changing but at the end of the day you know we have to stay rooted uh, in, in, in who we are and who we have been so it's gonna be really interesting to see so let me let me know what you uh, think down in the comments below we'll keep this conversation rolling man as always until then you stay out there you keep grinding and you stay stoked <laughs>